Hey guys, in today's video, we're going over how to use MIDI to control your DMX lighting. So using this method, you can trigger lights manually using either a MIDI keyboard, a MIDI foot controller, which is what I'm gonna do, or just you know any sort of MIDI controller. Or the other option with this is that you can use a tablet or a computer and you can send MIDI commands to your DMX controller to control your lights so that it syncs up with your music. I'm gonna be going over both of those methods in this video. This is a fairly common request that I've gotten in the comment section, and this has been something that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I'm gonna explain how I'm going to be using this towards the end of the video. So if that's what you're wanting to do, this is the video for you. But before we start, this is a little bit more advanced. You do need to understand MIDI, and you do need to understand how to program DMX for DMX lighting. If you need help understanding one or both of those topics, I do have a beginner's guide about MIDI, and I do have a beginner's guide about DMX programming. You're definitely gonna wanna watch those two videos first before you watch this one, because this one is a little bit more advanced. Before we get started, this is a music tech channel, tutorials, gear reviews. I do gear giveaways on this channel. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when I put out new videos. And hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So in order to do this, you need some sort of DMX lighting controller that accepts MIDI commands. It needs to have MIDI in, and it needs to have DMX out. That's the requirement for this. So there's many controllers out there, some by Shave, American DJ, Alation, stuff like that. The one that I settled on is ADJ DMX Operator. It's a really nice controller for not a lot of money. That's the one that I settled on with the research. If you do want to purchase this one, I'll post purchase links down below in the description, but basically any controller that accepts MIDI and outputs DMX will work with this method. So I am going to be doing this with a physical controller, so I do like that because then I can make changes and adjustments and stuff like that. There are other ways to do this, and I'll address that more towards the end of the video, but whatever you get, as long as you have a device that accepts MIDI and outputs DMX, you'll be good. So you are going to have to look up how your specific DMX controller controls your lights, not really what this video is about. However, I am going to quickly go over how this DMX controller that I have works. Briefly, I'm going to go over how to program just scenes and chases on this controller. If you don't care about this part, go ahead and skip to this spot on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go over how this works here really quick. You have your DMX out here on the top, so plug in your lights. I am going to be doing this wirelessly. I do have a review on these wireless DMX dongles that work amazingly well. I definitely recommend them. But plug in your lights. You should know how to do that. And then you can see I have two different lights over here. So the way I have the DMX configured on these, the light bar is set to address D1, and it takes up seven channels of DMX signal. My easy par on the left is set to address 33, and it takes up eight channels of DMX signal. If that already lost you, you need to watch my DMX beginner guide. That was your test. So the way that this works is you have your different faders right here. So what you're gonna do is actually, so when you select fixture one, you have DMX one, two, three, all the way to eight. To get to the next ones, and you can see that right here, so that's one through eight, when you push this channel slash bank button, that will get you through DMX channels 9 through 16, 17 through 24, and then 25 through 32. So I just need to leave it on here. Now, when you go to the next fixture, that's where it starts from 33. So it'll go from 33 to 41 or whatever that would be, and so on and so forth. And then setting it to fixture 3 will be the next group of 32. This next one will be the next group of 32, and so on and so forth. That's why I have my bar set to DMX1 so that I can control my faders this way on this one. And then when I want to control the faders on my second one, I hit the second button right here. So you can see I'm able to control the faders that way. So for my bar light, I'm going to just set that to red. And then for my Chave light, I'm gonna set that one to green. So now I have that set right here, how I want it to look. Okay, so how to program a scene. So the way that you do this, you have different scenes up here, and you can see that I have some of them saved. So I have red, green, blue, amber, white, and some other ones. Let me just go ahead and put it into blackout mode right now, which you can always do by hitting this button. Okay, so the way that you do this, so let's say I want to make a scene of all red. So what I'm gonna do is on my bar, I'm gonna bring that up. This is the master fader, red, green, blue, and amber, which I don't want any of those. This one is just macro colors, and this one is the strobe feature. So I just want red, and then for the easy par, this is my master fader, this is my red, no greens, no amb blues, and no ambers. So they're both set to red right now. That's what I want. So in order to program that, what I would do is I would hold program, and you might not be able to see that because of the blinking light, but it's blinking right here, which means that it's in program mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit record, this record button, 
scene one. And then it flashed, and that means that it's saved. Now I want them to be all green. So here, I'm gonna set that to green, and I'm gonna set this one to green as well. So again, it's still in program mode, so I'm gonna say record that onto scene two. So I have already done this ahead of time. Here's a red, here's a green, here's a blue, amber. This one I call just kind of a nice color. I always like this color, amber and blue. Light blue, purple, which is the best stage color. I love a purple wash, and then white. So those are the different ones I have. You can save them into different banks. So, you know, I don't just get eight scenes. I have up to 30 banks worth of scenes. So it's pretty simple on how to program a scene. Okay, and now how to program a chase. So your chases are over here. So again, you're going to hold program so that you get to program. Let's do chase seven. This is what I want to do. So I want scene one and then hit record. Scene one is going to be the first step of the chase. And I'm going to do scene five, record, two, record, six, record, three, record, seven, record, four, record, eight, record. That's the order that I want the chase to go in. I'm going to hold program to get out of it. And then I can hit number seven. And the thing is, is that you have, you can set it to auto or I can manually scroll through them. So it's going to go in order one, five, two, six, three, seven, four, eight. Or the other option that I can do, let's get it back to the first one. I can just push auto and it'll scroll through it and it'll go to the speed based on where the speed knob is set to. So if I set it all the way, you know, it's just gonna go through them, you know, 10 a second. So it's very, very fast. Let's do it around there. So about a second. And that's how you program a chase. And the last step, this is really important on setting this, because remember, we're gonna be controlling this device with MIDI. In order to do that, that MIDI slash record button right here, you're gonna hold that button and it'll say in on what channel. So you're gonna set this to what channel you want this device to receive MIDI info on. It's best practice, in my opinion, not to just set it to channel one. So I have chosen to set this to receive info on MIDI channel 12. Once I'm done with that, i hold it again to get out of it. It'll flash saying that it's saved. And now it will receive commands on MIDI channel 12. Very important that you do this. So again, I will post purchase links down below for this specific controller if you are interested in checking it out for yourself. So now that you have your DMX controller set up, so you have scenes and chases and stuff like that, now you have to figure out how does your DMX controller respond to MIDI? What MIDI commands does it need to receive in order to trigger these scenes and chases and stuff like that? You can often find that in the manual, and this is how mine reacts to MIDI. Okay, now you need to look at your lighting controller and see what MIDI commands it accepts. Again, if you don't know anything about MIDI, you should watch my beginner's guide to understand MIDI. So mine, specifically, if I send MIDI notes, that's how I control the DMX controller. So MIDI notes 0 through 11 will turn on or off chase 1 through 12. MIDI notes 12 through 18 will turn on and off scenes 1 through 8. I can change the banks, obviously banks 1 through 30, by MIDI notes 20 through 49. If I send MIDI note 50, that will turn on or off sound mode. 51 will turn on or off auto mode. And 52 will send a blackout. So now that I know what MIDI commands I need to send to my lighting controller, I know how to program my MIDI controller to send these commands to my DMX lighting controller. Might seem a little complicated, but follow along and I think it'll make sense. Okay, so now that we have the DMX controller programmed, we know the commands that we need to send to the DMX controller in order to trigger these scenes and chases. Now you have to have a MIDI device that sends these commands to your DMX controller. So there's three different ways that you can do this. One, with a MIDI controller, two, with a tablet like an iPad, and three, with a computer. Although with a computer using software might actually be better, and I'll address that later at the end of the video, but all three of these methods I'm gonna show you now. So as far as with a MIDI controller, you can do this with like a keyboard, or just you know a MIDI controller, anything that outputs MIDI, or the way that I'm gonna do this is with a MIDI foot controller. So using this method, this can be valuable to manually trigger scenes. If you need to switch all of your lights to red or something like that, you can do this with either a button press or a foot switch. It's very easy to do that with this. This method isn't really for syncing to the music. It instead, this is for manual control. Just push one button and all of your lights turn blue or push one button and then all, all of your devices go to sound activated mode or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna show you first. So I'm gonna be doing this with my MIDI foot controller. I have chosen in the Morningstar MC8 as my MIDI foot switch. But again, even if you have a different MIDI controller, like a keyboard, a MIDI controller, or a different MIDI foot switch, the same ideas in this apply to you as well. You're just gonna have to figure out how you program your MIDI foot controller or MIDI keyboard or whatever you're using to output MIDI 
to your DMX controller. It's a lot of words there. Okay, so I've preset this up on my Morningstar controller. I love this controller that is so customizable. So what I have is I've named, you know, I have all my different presets here, red, green, blue, amber, and stuff like that. But what I have is I say that on a press, when I press a button, I want to send a note command. That note command that I want to send is note 12, which is C0. So if you do need to see, you know, what those notes are, you can see them here on the screen so you can pause them. So if your MIDI controller doesn't say note 12, instead you have to send C0. It is kind of frustrating, but I'm glad that the Morningstar is smart about that. So I'm gonna send note 12, velocity at 127. That's usually what I try to do for sending an on command. And again, I need to set this to MIDI channel 12. This is going to send the command to load scene one, because remember, my DMX device needs to receive note 12 to trigger scene one on MIDI channel 12. This next one, I'm gonna go over to green. This is the second scene. Same idea, when you press the button, I'm going to send note 13, which will trigger scene two on MIDI channel 12. And then on blue, which is scene three, I'm sending note 14. Amber, which is scene four, I'm sending note 15, and so on and so forth. I do have a blackout one here as well. If you remember, I need to send MIDI note 52, which in this case is E3. That is what I have programmed for a blackout. Chases are a little different, so I have two different things that I'm sending here. So remember, to send chase one through 12, those are MIDI notes zero through 11. So I wanna send chase one. This is what's confusing about MIDI. Since it starts on zero, that's technically chase one. You always have to calculate a lot with MIDI. But I'm gonna send note zero on MIDI channel 12, but I'm I'm also going to send 51. What is 51? That is enabling auto mode, because I want it to auto cycle through it. I'm not going to be there to push the button on my DMX controller. So I want it to automatically scroll through these. So I'm having it sending two different things at once. It will trigger chase one, and will also trigger auto mode. I also have that for chase two over here. This is triggering chase two, and also turning on auto mode and also the same thing here with Chase 3. I have just turning auto on and off just in case something goes wrong. And then I have one for sound mode because if you remember audio mode or you know listening to the music is on 50, so I have that there as well. So that's how I have mine configured. Okay, so now that I have that programmed, so I'm gonna come out of the MIDI out port of my Morningstar. I'm gonna plug that to the MIDI in on my DMX controller. Okay, so now you can see, here's red, Green, blue, amber, nice, light blue, purple. Then I have it on the other page where I have it on white. I can set it to sound mode. So as I'm talking, it picks it up. I can also tap kind of up here because the microphone is by the controller, so it'll hear that. I can set it to auto. So right now it's just going to scroll through them. And it's just going to go up and down the scenes one through eight. I turn that off. I can set it to chase one. And I do have that one member. I send it so that it would send auto and chase one at the same time. Turn that off, chase two and chase three. So there you go. I am controlling my lights with a MIDI foot switch. Okay, so that's how you can do it manually. But what if you want to sync your music to like backing tracks or something like that? So if you play to a click track or backing tracks, you can actually have the music sync up to the lighting, or I guess the lighting sync up to the music. So when you want it to turn white for the chorus, it'll all turn white. And if you want it to blink during the bridge, you can program that so it always does that during that part in the song, which is really cool. That's actually what I do with my original music. I have all the lights and stuff like that synced up to the show, and it's, it, it's definitely awesome. However, it is very time consuming, so just plan to give yourself a lot of time in order to do this. So you need to connect your tablet to your lighting controller. So there is a product that I just reviewed on the channel. It, this, this device right here, this is the CME U2 MIDI Pro. This thing is awesome, so it has USB on one side and then MIDI in and out on the other side. It's only like 20 bucks and I'll post links down below for that as well. But basically, you just get something like this. This converts, in my case, lightning. Yours might be USB-C or something like that into USB-A. So just plug this in here, and then this goes into my DMX lighting controller. So for me, there are two apps I know that I use for 
using backing tracks and outputting MIDI that is synchronized. The two that I've reviewed are Stage Tracks 3 and Multi Tracker. Both are great apps, both work a little bit differently. The one that I've settled on is Stage Tracks 3, so that's the one that I'm gonna be demoing. If you do want to do this with Multi Tracker, it is also possible. You're gonna to have to watch my video to see how that works because it is a little bit different than Stage Tracks. Okay, so Stage Tracks makes this really easy. So I'm gonna to go to the song, I'm just gonna to go to December since that's what I did the majority of my Stage Tracks video on. And you go to edit lyrics and in here this is where you start doing the commands so you're going to push this bracket button right here and i'm going to say midi at what time so i'm going to say zero minutes colon one seconds and zero milliseconds colon i'm going to say n for note 12 because i need to send note 12 on midi channel 12. so what this is this is code for i'm going to send midi at what point in time in the track what command am I gonna send? I'm gonna send note 12 on which MIDI channel. I'm gonna do this again. MIDI at zero minutes, two seconds, zero milliseconds, colon to end it, note 13, which is gonna load scene two on channel 12. And let's do one more. MIDI at three seconds, send note 14, which will load scene three on MIDI channel 12. When I push play, at one second it'll turn red, two seconds it'll turn green, and three seconds it'll turn blue. One, two, and three. And there you go. Very, very nice, very simple. Okay, so now you might be asking, well, one second, two seconds, and three seconds doesn't really help. It's not gonna sync up to the music, and you're correct. There's definitely an easier way to do this. Well, Stage Tracks 3 actually makes this really simple. It has a record MIDI commands mode, so you enable that, and then you push play, and then you send the commands to Stage Tracks while the backing track is playing. So when the verse comes, you're gonna push a button on a MIDI controller to say, hey, at this exact time, I want you to send a scene change or something like that. It's a little bit more complicated than that, obviously, and I'm gonna show you here in a second, but you can do this with you know, a MIDI keyboard or uh, any sort of device that is going to send MIDI to stage tracks. So my keyboard was a little too big to do this in frame, so I instead am going to be doing this with a separate iPad that's gonna be sending MIDI messages to my other iPad. But basically what I'm saying is you could do this with any MIDI device that sends programmable MIDI commands. So this is gonna be a little bonus. I'm gonna show you how to connect two iPads together so you can send MIDI from one iPad to the other iPad. There's an app called MIDI Meter, and what you do is you can go in here and you can advertise your MIDI device. You can click here to advertise MIDI service, so I'm gonna do that. And then on my other app, I have MIDI Meter loaded, and now it finds my iPad as its own device. So now I can send MIDI messages to this iPad. That is a really cool way to sync two iPads together over MIDI. And I've loaded up MIDI Designer Pro, this pretty wild app. I did an in-depth review if you wanna check it out, but what you can do, you push this MIDI button, and it says waiting for MIDI events. So I can hit play, and then right at the moment that I wanna load scene one, I push scene one, and then push scene two, and then load scene three, and then one, and then two, and then three. And I can stop there. You can see the thing is, is that it's sending note on and note off. So I would have to go in and remove all of these note off commands. I need to fix that in MIDI Designer Pro, but it's not the end of the world. But doing this way, you make it more accurate to the downbeat or wherever you're trying to change the lighting. So in the previous one, I just said at one second, at two second, at three second. That might not be exactly where I want it to change. Now it says two seconds and 29 milliseconds. That's right on the downbeat. So like for the verse, it'll change right at the verse or it'll change right at the chorus or exactly where you want it to be. So this is a much more accurate way to get the lights to change with the music using this method. Okay, so now I don't need the other iPad anymore. And now when I rewind it and start from the beginning, it'll do all these commands at exactly these moments. So when I hit play, you can see it's switching exactly from the times that are listed on here. After editing all of that, I realized I should have just done this with my Morningstar. I have no idea why I did this from iPad to iPad. Uh, I could have just done this with the Morningstar, especially since it was already programmed. So yay me for figuring this out after I edited all of that together. But hopefully you got a bonus about how to use MIDI Meter to send MIDI from one iPad to another. Anyway, Stage Tracks 3 is awesome. I did a three-part video series on it if you want to check it out. I love this app. It has been awesome for my live shows. Uh, if you want a detailed breakdown about the app, you can watch my three-part video series about it. And then finally, you can do this with a computer. So basically any DAW, 
Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, Cubase, as long as able to output MIDI sequences, which basically all of them do. So you will need an audio interface that outputs MIDI. If you don't have one, mine doesn't, mine specifically doesn't. You can, again, you can also use this cable right here. So this goes to your computer just with USB, and then this goes into your DMX controller. And that's how I'm gonna be doing that with this part of the tutorial. Okay, so in Logic, this is the way that you do it in Logic. Again, you can do this in whatever DAW you want. I'm just a Logic user. So you're gonna create a new track and you're gonna go to external MIDI right here. Click that and you're gonna say, what's the MIDI destination? I'm gonna send this out, my U2 MIDI Pro, and I'm gonna send that out MIDI channel 12. That's how you set it up in Logic. But basically you set up a MIDI channel and you say, where do you want it to go out? I have my DMX controller connected with this cable connected to my computer. So that is what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to start drawing in notes, just kind of like you would any MIDI notes. So in Logic, you know, you double click it and you get to the piano roll down here, and I'm gonna just start drawing in MIDI notes. So in Logic, it doesn't tell you what MIDI note number it is, so I have to go just by the notes. So I know that MIDI note 12 is C negative one, and then note 13 is C sharp negative one, so I'm gonna draw them in that way. Actually, while I was editing this, I realized that this is 12 notes off. C zero is supposed to be the command that I need to send in order to trigger scene one. But in logic, it's C negative one. I'm glad I caught this because this is something that you might run into. So if your MIDI commands are not working, try moving it up or down by 12 notes. MIDI is always a headache. I've done this hundreds of times and it still gives me a headache with just slight alterations that you have to do. So in logic, I need to send out on C negative one in order for this to work, not C zero. Just keep in mind that might happen to you. And you'll actually see as I start drawing these notes in, since it's configured properly, the lighting is going to change. So see, as I'm drawing them in, you can see it's loading the specific scene that I want to. And then when I push play, it will scroll through all of these at exactly the right moment that I assigned it to. So that's how you control it from a computer, sending the commands to your DMX controller. Okay, so those are the three methods. Hopefully it helped you guys out. So something just keep in mind about this. I think this is a little bit more of an easier method. So you're not gonna do anything too advanced because you are gonna run into limitations with this. So obviously triggering scenes and triggering chases and triggering blackout and auto mode and stuff like that is very helpful. I really, really, really wish there was some sort of MIDI way to control the speed of the auto change. That would be incredibly helpful. And if there was a way to be able to tap you know, like a tempo or something like that for auto mode so that it would blink to the music. So if this was the tempo, then the lights would change like this. I don't have that option with this controller. So you are gonna run into limitations with this. So doing this with a computer can give you more options and doing it with a computer running software. So I do that with my original music. My original music is a project called Spiral Cell and it's, you know, there's like dialogue, there's a video that syncs up, there's lighting that syncs up and stuff like that. So that's way more advanced and I probably wouldn't be able to do it with something like this. So with that, I use an app called DMXs. So you need the hardware and the software for it. They actually discontinued it, which is a bummer because it was such a great piece of software and hardware. But again, I would need my computer in order to do that because you need the software and the hardware so it only works with the computer. I don't bring my computer to every single show. So when I do, you know, more, especially like weddings and corporate events and stuff like that, especially for like a wedding or something like that, when we're playing like the dinner set, I can just push one button, all the lights turn white or blue or purple or whatever, you know, we want it to look like. I can push the blackout when we go on our break or I could just put it to music mode and it'll change to the music for like reception and stuff like that. So that's basically how I. I plan to do this. And if I need more advanced stuff, I'm going to use a computer in order to do more advanced lighting. And the thing is, is that I really wish that there was just like a box, just like a little box that you plug into your computer, you program all of your lights, kind of like DMX is where you program all of your scenes and your chases and you can make things move and stuff like that. And you save that to this box and the box has a MIDI in and DMX out. So just in the same way that I have done here, is instead of having like a big controller, it's just like a little box that I send a MIDI command to and it outputs DMX. It'd be so nice if that existed. So part of the reason I'm doing this video right now is that the video next week, I'm gonna be reviewing one of these products that might be able to help you out. This, this guy right here, it's called the B-Beat. This thing is wild, so it basically replaces your laptop. So it has multiple outputs for like backing tracks, so you can do multi-track outputs. It also has HDMI out, so you can sync video. 
and it also has a MIDI out. So it doesn't have DMX out, but it has MIDI out. So using what we learned in this video, you actually can program this to send MIDI commands in order to trigger MIDI lighting. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see the video on this. But again, it doesn't have DMX out, so I really wish that there was a box that would accept MIDI in and would send DMX out. Now, I did actually just get an ad on Instagram for a device called the MVP, and it seems to be pretty new, and it was like a Kickstarter thing. It looks almost exactly like what I'm looking for. It's just, it accepts MIDI commands. I think I think just from a computer, though, I ha I'm, I'm gonna look into it more, but it, sent, it gets MIDI commands, and then it outputs DMX and video. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is. I'm gonna be doing more research into it. I did reach out to them to see if it was something that I could review on the channel, and they do seem interested. Nothing's confirmed yet. Basically, what I'm saying is that's a long way to say, hey, subscribe to the channel if you wanna check out both of those videos as they come out. However, if you do know of this magic box that I'm dreaming of, please leave a comment down below. I am definitely, definitely, definitely interested in checking that out, especially if I could control it from you know a tablet, like an iPad or my MIDI foot controller. So that's basically it. This is a long video. I hope to help you guys out. Please do me a favor. If you made it to the end of this video, if you're watching this part right now, just hit the thumbs up button. This video took forever to put together and it really does actually help out the channel a lot. I know YouTubers beg for it all the time, but it truly does help recommend the video to more people, so I would appreciate it. And I'm assuming if you made it to the end of this long video that you found it helpful. So please consider hitting the thumbs up button. Like I mentioned, those wireless DMX dongles are awesome. I definitely recommend that you check out my video on those. It's way better than running a bunch of cables. And be sure to check out some of my videos on MIDI as well if you are interested. Both of those videos can be viewed by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Ewell Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Pushing this button, which it didn't work at all.